Hello and welcome to this video on local anesthetics, some basic concepts. This video is a part of our series on CNS pharmacology in which I've covered other drugs including Parkinson's, Parkinson medication, inhaled anesthetic, intravenous anesthetics, and I've covered all the basic concepts related to those drugs as well. So let's get into this. So what do local anesthetics do? They locally block nociception. What's that supposed to mean? Anesthesia means the loss of all sensations including pain and those, that's usually the one we intend to remove. What's nociception? Nociception is pain. What's meant by locally block? So if you're having a surgery on your hand or if you're having something on your hand and you want to block the sensation of pain and that's usually what's required for us because the patient doesn't want to feel pain. So you block the sensation of pain in this particular area. Pain feeling. It's divided into esters and amides. Both are bases both with similar mode of action and other sensations. Now this is a point to note that it not just removes the sensation of pain, it also removes other sensations such as the feeling of touch, pressure, light touch and all the other feelings. This is the structure of esters. I don't think you need to remember this. I've added this for the, complete of, uh, for the sake of completeness. This is the structure of amides. So how I remember this is that the esters is a more difficult word to say. That's why the molecule itself is a more difficult and a contorted one. It has this side chain. And amides is a more easier word to say. That's why this molecule is more simpler. So this is how the cell usually exists in its normal state. The inside of the cell is more negatively charged. The outside of the cell exists like this. So some sort of stimuli, what's a stimuli? Stimuli is something that causes your senses to become active. That's a stimulus. So noxious stimulus is something bad that I think that was noxious means cause the channels to open the positive charges move inside. Anything that's supposed to cause pain causes these channels. These things that you see are the channels. Any noxious stimulus, any pain causing sensation causes this channel to open and the positive charges move inside. The positive charges move inside and depolarize the cell. They depolarize the cell. Now, what happens is that normally this cell was not only negative, but all after depolarization, it becomes almost positive. It moves to zero and then up. Now let's look at it in a bit more detail. This is a channel in its closed form. You see my pointer, if it tries to move inside, there's no space for it to move inside. Now the channel is open, so if my pointer tries to move in, it can easily go through the wall, like this, right? And now the channel is in open and inactivated state. What does that mean? You see this ball and chain thing? What this ball and chain thing does is when the channel is supposed to close, when the charge particularly exceeds a particular amount of charge, this ball and chain thing, this ball goes into the channel and closes it. So even though the channel itself is open, the charges cannot move inside. So it's in an open, inactivated state. What do local anesthetics do? They bind the channel in its open, inactivated state and thus they prolong the inactivated state of the channel so the channel cannot conduct the charges. If they, they cannot conduct the charges, the person won't feel the sensation of pain because the sensation of pain was due to depolarization, which is not occurring because the channel is blocked in its open inactivated state. I've repeated all of these words because of these buzzwords that you need to remember. Local anesthetics bind in open inactivated state prolonging the inactivated state of the channel blocking the sensation of pain. Now let's look at some basic concepts in local anesthetics. Systemic absorption concludes the effect of these drugs. So if you want to anesthetize your hand and uh, the anesthetic that you used is now absorbed into the systemic circulation that will conclude the effect pH decrease. That conclusion means there will no longer be the effect and the feeling of pain and all of those other sensations will return. pH decrease. I told you that esters and amides are bases. So a pH decrease, meaning a more acidic pH, 
will decrease the efficacy and a higher dose will be required for to locally anesthetize that particular area. What's the order of loss? Pain, temperature, touch and pressure. Now you might be asking, how am I going to remember this for the exam? But I have got you a really interesting mnemonic. So from pain and temperature, you can remember the word paint. Now this might feel absurd, but this will help you remember this. Pain and temperature become paint. So paint, touch becomes touching and pressure becomes picture. So paint a touching picture. So if anyone wants to ask you about local anesthetics and you have to explain it to them, then you better paint a touching picture, meaning pain, temperature, touch and pressure. So now you've got it. So now let's talk about esters. So in these esters, I've only covered the most important things here. I'm not going to go into the detail of each particular drug, but what are the particular important things that you need to understand regarding the drug is what we're going to cover. Cocaine. Now that's something you might have heard about. What does cocaine do? And then there's benzocaine. Cocaine blocks the neurotransmitter reuptake. It's kind of a stimulant. It increases the levels. It increases the synaptic levels of these neurotransmitters. They block the dopamine reuptake. Dopamine is related to the reward pathway in your brain. You get that euphoric feeling associated with cocaine. And that's exactly why it's abused. Benzocaine has been associated with met hemoglobinemia. You're going to have to understand the presentation of met hemoglobinemia. And then that might come into your question that he was recently started on benzocaine for this particular procedure. And now the patient is presenting with this, 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 painting a picture of met hemoglobinemia. That might come into a question. So Fe2 plus, what is met, met hemoglobinemia in which Hemoglobin is usually present in Fe2+, plus. the iron hemoglobin is present in Fe2+, plus form, but methemoglobinemia means that it's oxidized to Fe3+, plus form, and electron is removed, and then the patient will have this chocolate-colored blood. This is the presentation of methemoglobinemia. I've, I've just stated a little bit here for you to understand. Procaine has a short duration of action. It has CNS and CVS adverse effects, which we won't go into the detail of. Tetracaine has spinal, is used for the spinal and corneal anesthesia and has a long duration of action. So how you're going to remember that is tetracaine. It's procaine is one word pro and tetra means four. So it has four times. This is just for you to remember. This is not exactly true, but that's how you're going to remember it. Tetracaine has a longer duration of action than procaine. Now let's talk about amides. Lidocaine has an immediate duration of action. I'm, again, I'm going to state it. I'm only talking about the really high yield exam uh, particular points in these particular drugs. So lidocaine has an immediate action of immediate duration of action. Pardon me. Mepivacaine. Mepivacaine is contraindicated for pregnant women. Mepivacaine is contraindicated for pregnant women. And how I remember this particular point is that the P in Mepivacaine and the P in pregnant, the P Mepivacaine and the P in pregnant. That's how you're going to remember that Mepivacaine is the local anesthetic, is the amide which is, which is contraindicated for pregnant women. Bupivacaine, severe myocardial depression. Now your question might be that how am I gonna differentiate between mepivacaine for pregnant women and bupivacaine for severe myocardial depression? And that's a fair question. And that's a fair question. How I'm gonna remember this is that bupivacaine is bad for the beating heart. Mepivacaine not for pregnant ladies. Now this might seem absurd to you right now, but believe me, you when you're sitting in that exam, you're going to remember these very weird, these almost stupid mnemonics. Paint a touching picture, pain, temperature, touch and pressure. Mepivacaine, not for pregnant women. Bupivacaine is bad for the beating heart. What are the adverse effects? 
they decrease the activity now this is these are the adverse effects of all local anesthetics combined that's why i've added these here the uh, the individualized adverse effects i added in those particular slides adverse effects what do they do they decrease the activity of inhibitory neurons meaning they not only increase the active decrease the activity of the depolarizing neurons they decrease the activity of inhibitory neurons they decrease the activity of all neurons so they decrease the activity of inhibitory neurons the patient will become restless the patient will become agitated right so they decrease the activity of all neurons they might have cns depression they might have respiratory depression now that these are things that we don't want in our patients activity of the cardiovascular system they decrease the activity of the cardiovascular system now these are things that might occur in higher doses these are things that might occur differently for different patients but these are the adverse effects that you need to remember they decrease the activity of inhibitory neurons so the patient might present to you as restless and agitated the patient might have the patient might have cns depression the patient might have respiratory depression or cardiovascular depression decreased cardiac out finally let's summarize all of this we're going to cover only the important points so what do local anesthetics do they locally block sensation they bind the sodium channels in an open inactivated state and how does the loss of sensation occurs they paint pain temperature a touching touch picture pressure local anesthetics are further divided into esters and amides benzocaine causes met hemoglobinemia I want you to remember this benzocaine causes met hemoglobinemia that's an important point and might present to you in the form of question they're also associated with respiratory cardiovascular and cns depression and that's it that's all of local anesthetics for you thank you so much for watching this video if you want to watch more of my videos i have a complete series on cns pharmacology you can watch that and please subscribe and press the bell icon thank you